Women Council, praise the Lord. I feel very honored today to stand here on this podium. I don't think I'm the greatest, but I am the least of you all. But God has given me that chance to be able to stand here as a servant of all. I've been telling people that uh, this, this particular office, it did not come by chance. It was prayed for. And therefore, when I am here, I can only glory God for what he has done. And so I thank you because I know the last time we were here, we were on a church agenda. This is the second time I am here with a burden God has given me. And now you have welcomed me a second time. May Jehovah God bless you and favor you tremendously for allowing me to come here again. Allow me also to send the greetings to you from my dear husband, the Deputy President, Regadi Gashagwa. Every time you see a woman who is standing without so many, many crutch, uh, uh, crutches on the face and she's looking young at 58, you must know there is a man behind that. And he's a good man. And I tell them, I love him. Yeah. And sometimes people are jealous and they keep talking about my husband. Why do you talk about my husband? Yeah. God gave him to me. <laughs> God gave me a good husband. And I will continue to pray for him and I will stand with him because that is my duty. From God, I was called his helper. And I will help him on my knees <laughs> and I'll pray for him because God has raised him and put him in leadership and he must be wise and everything he says must be blessed and favored. Amen. So I always pray for him. The other person who sent me is His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and Her Excellency Mama Rachel. They are busy, but they don't forget the church. Amen. 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 And I'm sure they were here just the other day to say thank you. Our governor, we went to 40 counties selling the church agenda. And we were telling them that the church has interest. When people were saying that the church and government are separate, we were saying there is not even a single day since the world was created, that the church and government has been separated. And it is the reason why every five years you find them in church, those politicians. They come every five years. And what do they come to do in church if church and government are not separate? They come because they know we have to speak to the heavens. And when the heavens answer, they are given the mandate to rule. And I can tell you from the very first government, God was a king. And he was a president. He was the minister for finance. He was the law giver. He was a policy maker by himself. Until man decided he wanted to be ordinary. And they said they wanted a king. It was God who chose them a king. But not one day did God talk to that king. He only talked to the prophet that God gave. And therefore, when anybody would say that the church and government are supposed to be separated, according to the Bible, that is falsehood. And that is why we went with the agenda and we were saying the church must be included in decision-making tables. Because when the king is in the policy making, the execution of it and custodian and the compass, the moral conscience of the society 
as a prophet. And therefore, we had to come together. Because as you may know, we don't reside in heaven and come in the morning. When the governor puts on the road, those are the same roads that our congregants have to pass. So when they are bad, we must speak about it. When we want water, it is not the pastor who does it, but the government has to do it. And when you know your purpose, then you leave. And that is why John the Baptist was pointing people to repentance and bringing them to Jesus because he was the purpose of their being. And so we, the church, are the stars to shine the glory of God on, this, on his creation. And when we are seen, people should see the light of God because we come from the father of lights, from all, where all good things come. And therefore, when you see us, no good things are coming in Bungoma. Because the light of the world is filled in this sanctuary. And we are giving God glory for whatever he has done. And God will elevate us. I've said that last time, I came with an agenda. But today, I come with a burden. I am glad to be back here. First, to acknowledge your tremendous support during the Church Agenda Initiative. May God forever bless and favor you. The last time, our driving force was Genesis 11, verse 6. Those of us who came to the Church Agenda meetings, we said, the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. And true, as we went on with the church agenda, where we were saying that the church needed to be given the freedom to worship, we also said that the church needed to have its own registrar so that we do not go there and get mixed up with other societies. We also said that the church had an agenda where we needed rehabs because we had seen about this problem of the boy child who is outside there, desperate, who is hopeless and unable to bring himself back to his purpose. And therefore, we said there should be rehab centers where it will be a refuge for these homeless and where the church would be able to give them spiritual guidance and also the, 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 med the medics will be there, psychologists will be there, but above all, our God would heal the land. There were very many things that were in that agenda. And God endorsed the agenda. I'm coming to report God fulfilled the agenda. Because on 5th May 2022, we signed an MOU with the current president. Yes. A thousand clergy yes. were at the Hazaras Mansion. Yes. And God, we told him we are going to support him. And he was going to be president. Is he president or not? Yes. So we serve a God who answers prayers. Amen. When you have faith in him, he will definitely answer. We were not even looking, uh, uh, Governor, we were not looking for this position. I left here as a pastor. I have come back. As a second lady in the Republic. Because I was faithful with the literal. And now God has entrusted me with much. I am accountable and I'm responsible. I'm not in that office as an ornament or a monument. 
I am there as an instrument of God to bring change and to transform the future and to dignify the future of the vulnerable. Remember, we transverse 40 counties with one message and in one accord for the glory of God. And God did not disappoint. He was gracious to the Kenya Kwanzaa government and granted the team victory in the face of many odds. This is the God of the church, even now. We praise him for his doings. On behalf of the government, we say thank you for your support and may God be glorified. We must continue to trust the Lord for development and the building up of the body of Christ in this nation. Pray like never before for the success to come. Secondly, we prayed to God to open a door for us to ignite revival. Remember, the win was a conviction that God had heard our prayers and opened a door for us to advance the kingdom business with our borders, within our borders and beyond. You must take this advantage and use the opportunity to propagate the true gospel. Be bold and be courageous. As most of you are aware, the true foundation is Jesus Christ and his righteousness. The true religion is that which cares for the vulnerable populations and my office is dedicated to serve through four social pillars. That is, number one, the boy child. The other pillar that we are working on is widows and orphans. The other one is people with disabilities. And lastly, we have chaplinacy and family value pillar. That is all I desire to do in the office that God gave me. Because the vulnerable population are God's business. And I am an instrument, a battle axe of God, to be able to do what God sent me to do there. So the vulnerable population are within my heart and I'm committed to make sure that God's image is seen everywhere and people hear and understand that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm working with the fathers of faith, archbishops, bishops, pastors, indeed the entire clergy, even the brothers of Muslim to reach out to the vulnerable uh, society. Because when you come to the question of the boy child, we have boy children with the Muslim. Don't we have them? Are they not in drugs? We have in Christian. Are they not in drugs? We have them with the rich. Are they not in drugs? With the poor. Are they not in drugs? With the white. Are they not in drugs? With the blacks. Are they not in drugs? So we must, as a creation, all creation now, the sons of God must rise and manifest the glory of God. Amen. Champions, men, women of faith are entrusted by God to guide the people into godliness. We are the moral compass and conscience of the society. We must be committed, responsible, and accountable. Because if you are not responsible, you are not accountable. You will answer before God. You are not there as an ornament in that church. God did not call you for you to wear just a collar. He called you to call them to himself. We cannot afford to drop the baton when a generation of seed carrier is under pressure and under satanic attack. It is time. Say it is time. It is time for us to rise and be able to rescue the boy child from where he has fallen. I call you on 
I call on you to be their mentors, be their life coaches, be available, be their role models, and when they run to you, open your hearts, open the doors of the church, love on them, and do not turn them away. Jesus did not turn anyone away. Jesus welcomed the children, he welcomed the reprotic, he welcomed the prostitutes, he welcomed everybody because that was his work. We are imitators of Christ and our work is not to turn anybody away, is to bring them to the feet of Christ at the cross. We must also go outside the four walls of the church and into the byways and highways to fulfill the great commission which instructs us to go ye, but not to sit ye. And we are having a big problem in the church today. We are so comfortable in the four walls. We don't want to go outside. We want to remain with the people that we preach from January to December, when the world is already lost out there and desperate looking for our God. So don't sit ye, go ye. And that is Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19. And it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and then the Holy Spirit. You cannot baptize the baptized. You cannot save the saved. You cannot deliver the delivered. You need to go out there. And we need to go and harvest souls. Because the harvest is great. But the laborers are few. And you are among the few chosen, called to go and do what God called you to do. The future church is in the gutter. We must go and bring those boy children out of the gutter and into the house of God. Those are the future missionaries. If you can speak to the person who is sitting next to you, tell them man of and or woman of God, the future church is in the gutter. We need to bring them back to alignment. The seed carrier and the future leader, the father, the protector of families and nation is in the gutter. We must bring them back. It is time to leave your places of comfort and do things differently. Go and rescue the boy child. Because that is what God is saying. Mungu anasema, muende uko inche, mwalete hawa avulana. Kwa sababu kutoka zile enzi za Biblia. Shetani akitaka kumaliza ulimwengu. Kazi yake anaandama mtoto mvulana. And right now that is his gimmick. He always does that. Anytime there is a deliverer to come, he puts them in the gutter and kills all of them. We cannot afford to drop the baton, we must go and rescue them, and quickly. Jacob of Wood understood and looked at the boy child who was the child of hers, and she said, this one, even against all the decrees of the king, this one I will save. And she did not care about herself. She did not care about the comfort. She did not care what the king was going to say. She kept the child. And you know, there were five women who made sure that the boy child was saved. That was Jacob, there was Miriam, there was the two midwives, Sivira and Pua, and there was the Pharaoh's daughter. And now we have the tribe of Israel delivered from slavery. You and I are the Siviras, we are the Pua, we are the Jacob, we are Miriam and the daughter of Pharaoh. And if we can stand our boy child we will be rescued from the gutter. As a boy child champion, I understand the lengths and breadth I have to go to make the boy child agenda 
a national conversation. Faith without works is dead. I must not only pray. That is why I'm here. I'm transversing this country. And I said I will speak about this boy child until people hear. Until you get out of your comfort zone. Until you become like that judge who said, oh, this woman, she's going, she's going to wreck my ears. Let me give her her justice. So I am not stopping. And I'm, I'm very persistent. And I'm really bad. When I want something, I will get it. These boy children, we will get them out. The satanic agenda is to destroy the boy child, the seed carrier, which propagates generations. If the seed carrier is eliminated, it means even the girl child will not have a chance of becoming a mother. And that is why when I appeal for the boy child rescue, I'm rescuing the girl child. Because if we are here, you will know that some of those teenage pregnancies are not caused by the girl child. But when the boy child is in divine alignment, we are going to have less of those teenage pregnancies. We are going to have less of rapes. We are going to have less of crimes, gender-based violence. And if we can have a conversation with the fathers and the boy child, even FGM will be a thing of the past. So we must have a male conversation. We cannot and we must not leave that male conversation. For God made male and female. There is no good family, there is no good church, there is no good nation, there is no good community without male and and that is why we are saying we must not listen to foreign agendas and philosophies. We have our own as Africans. We have our culture. And we must maintain it for propagation and not, not to destroy the future generations. From where would you get a child with man sleeping with another woman? A man. And a woman with another woman. The Bible says that is abomination. In our African tradition, it's a taboo. Legally, it is criminal. Constitutionally, it is disallowed. And therefore, as Africans, we must stand for who we are. And you know, they cannot use that. <laughs> that is a satanic agenda. And it must stop. Amen. And as clergy and teachers who are with us here, they hold my boy children in your schools. So I value you very much. And I'll be having a conversation with you. And we will support you where you need us so that those children can be mentored and they brought from boys to men. And you will see they will start respecting the women. For how can it be that our, you expect a boy to respect women when we bring, a, a, bring them up to disrespect women? When they are growing up, they are not supposed to go near their mother. Is that not true? We tell them not to go to the kitchen. You tell them not to cry like uh, their sisters. You tell them not to be like their mothers. And any time they have something, they go to the kitchen, you ask them whether they are women. When they cry, you tell them they are crying like a woman. How on earth do you expect these young men who are brought up thinking that a woman is a, an object of dishonor then when they grow up, you tell them they are supposed to honor them and to respect them. I think we are asking too much. And therefore, we must change the way we do it. Our culture, which is not good, that we must discard. And as mothers, because this one I call on the mothers, we must rise up in bringing up our boy children 
Let them have emotions. Let them cry if they must. Teach them how to speak the problems out. Because right now, we are losing too many. We bring them up. We take them to, to the universities. I went to the Nairobi University the other day. And do you know, 55 had committed suicide. In a year, we are losing our children. You sell everything, you take them there, expecting them to come and help the society and help you, and then they are brought in a casket because they are not able to withstand the pressures of life. We must go to them. We must go to our children. We, the chaplinacy, we need to go to those schools, primary schools, secondary school, TVET. We go to colleges, we go to universities. Let go and speak hope to those children. It is our responsibility. We must mentor and disciple them. We cannot let a generation be destroyed as we watch. It is, a, it is wrong. Even God cannot forgive us. Our parents did not bring us up that way. We went to those universities, we finished. We were not kidding ourselves because we had a fallback position. Wazazi walikuwa na tuongelesha. They mentored us. But now we are too busy. Everybody is busy. The church is busy. The parents are busy. The sisters are busy. The brothers are busy. And all we are doing is losing our children. Jesus said, we must take care of the sheep. The only concern he had, he said to Peter, do you love me? What did, he, did, uh, did, Peter, did he tell Peter to do? Feed? Again, he repeated the second time and the third time. He never taught him to do anything else. He said, feed my sheep. We must feed them with the word of God. We must feed them with spiritual food. We must feed them with hope so that they are removed from the streets and also from the hopelessness. And also, Jesus showed that uh, he did not only want them to be fed with only the word of God. Jesus fed 5,000 with bread and fish. So the church today, you must open your doors to feed the people of God. If there is any evangelism you can do, is through feeding. My office has now six feeding kitchens in churches, in Kibera, in Korogocho. We are feeding the homeless. You must start feeding them. Because some of them are out there for lack of food. And I know when you start feeding, you start saving. As the Bible tells us, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And let me tell you, one day we went to one of the feeding kitchens. We had 400 young men from Donholm. And when they came, we preached to them, 16 got saved. Out of the ones that we have, been, we have been evangelizing, right now we have rescued 130 who needed inpatient um, uh, rehabilitation. And they are going to a rehab and we are paying for it. Because the only way to save these children is to get them out of the street, to a rehab center where they can get treatment. And within that rehab centers, you must volunteer as clergy to mentor them. 
and make sure by the time they come out of there, they are not only treated by the medics, but they also have been sp uh, treated spiritually. And when they are going on like that, we are also saying we must sponsor them to TVET. Vocational training. So that when they, they are there getting well, they are being trained. Some of them to paint, others to do masonry and all that. And then we have the county government, we have the national government, we are doing the, the, the affordable housing. We can connect them there so that they don't come from the streets and return to the streets. That is why they did ups. Because if today you removed me from the street, I was taking drugs, I was taking alcohol. I'm treated now. Niko sawa. Najua juzi nilisema nikiwa nandi. These young boys you see there were mechoma mbaka battery. And we can't afford to lose that. Lazima tuarudishie afya. Sindio? Because now even if uh, my sister there who is talking about the girl child. Sasa mutu wa mechoma battery. Niambie sasa, itakuwa aje. We must wake up and do the right thing. Yeah? Tutengeneze vijana sasawa. We bring them from boys to men. Men who can be men enough to be fathers. So that our girls can be mothers. And we can have a church. And we can have a good nation and a balanced family. <laughs> so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, what God the Father considers to be pure and genuine religion is this, to take care of the orphans, to take care of the widows and their suffering, and keep oneself from being corrupted by the world. I am willing and available to walk with you in the transformative agenda, a journey to save a generation. Are you ready? I think you can stand so that we can pray, if you are ready. So you will see me going round. This is what we are saying. In this land, we have the county government, and we are also there. There is land that is in this county. Imagine by 2030, we need 15 billion trees. If we were to get this county to two, just two billion trees with the young boys, and they are being paid to do it, how many will you engage to do tree nurseries? And also, they can do that tree nursery and we can do reforestation and you can get carbon credit. There is a lot that can be done. And we are coming up with programs that we can be able to engage them in agribusiness because it is important that they start to love agriculture. We were going through and we were looking at the age bracket of the farmers today. Do you know the farmers today are from 67 years? That is why we have the food deficit. People of 67 years are the farmers across Kenya. That is the average age. In another 20 years, they will be wiped out. And our children are not getting into that space. So you, we must do the youth agriculture where we show them that they can still be able to get into the land and do commercial farming and make money. Because our children are not going to do charity business. What they want to know is there anything in agriculture that we can do. And I was, I was saying, if you two did two billion trees, uh, Governor, with my boy children, and they sold that, for even 10 shillings. How much is that? 
It is a lot of money. And even us as clergy, we must now start to go to work because God will bless the work of your hands. And therefore, we must teach people to start working with their hands. As we pray, as we go to the crosset, as we go from one mountain to another, we must teach our people to work. Above all, let us introduce our children to farming. That is where the opportunities are many. And as they are doing that, we will teach them how to invest, and they will be homeowners, and they will become family people. Let's go before God and pray. Pray for the boy child. Pray for the seed carrier. Pray that he may be rescued. Pray that he will hear. Pray that God will bring him to divine alignment. Pray that this satanic agenda will be thwarted by the hand of God. Pray. Pray for our boy children. Pray for them that are in primary school. Pray for them not to be influenced by the wrong people. Let no wickedness touch our children. Let no satanic agenda be written upon the minds or the souls of our children. Erase it in the name of Jesus. We are here because we know these children are the future of our nation. These are the seed carriers. These are the fathers of tomorrow. These are the leaders of tomorrow. Pray for them. Pray that God may hear. Pray that the wrath of God may be removed from this nation. And that our children may be changed, transformed, and they become men and women of substance, men of valor, fathers by excellence, in the name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, we want to thank you once again this day. And we stand here on this exalted altar. Father, we raise the altar of our boy child in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that Lord God, wherever they are, let them hear the word of God and never be rescued by the hand of God. Our Lord and our God, we want to honor poor God to our errors in the past, oh dear God. We are the cause that they are in the streets, oh Jehovah. My Lord, we did not parent them in the right way. Oh, Father God, we repent in the name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord God Almighty, because you are a good Father, you are an awesome God, the one and true God who is able to do exceedingly above what we ask and pray, and even imagine, these are your children. These are your creation, God. And what we are asking this day, O oh God, is that you may descend and arise and, Father, scatter the enemy's agenda concerning the boy child in the name of Jesus. We pray that wherever they shall be, O oh God, the hand of God will draw them back to the house of God. We pray that, Lord God, they shall be the future missionaries. We pray that they will be the fathers, O oh God, where they have fallen, O oh God, in drugs, in alcohol, O oh God, and substance abuse. Father God, we pray that, Lord God, from this day henceforth, there will be a turnaround in the name of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus concerning them. The blood that speaks better things than that one of Abel. Father, we break the curse upon our children. The curse of poverty, O oh God. We bring them from poverty, O oh God, to prosperity and advancement in the agenda and in the plan and the will of the one and true God. Our Lord and our God, these children are a gift to us, O oh God. And we pray that we bring joy to the parents. As John the Baptist brought the joy to his parents and even to the world. And so do we say, those children who are in the streets, 
they are gift to us. We declare they are blessed. We declare they are being rescued right now by the angelic forces. In the name of Jesus, we pray that Lord God Almighty, the houses of worship will be filled by that next generation. Those who are calling themselves Generation Z, my Father, we call them to the house of God. In the name of Jesus, as parents, we speak a blessing and break every curse that is upon them. Whoever may have spoken words of curse upon them, we nullify in the name of Jesus. And now we cover them with the blessings of fathers and mothers in the name of Jesus. With the blessing of priesthood in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord God Almighty, we stand in corporate faith and we release an anointing in every city, in every village, in every house, in every individual. Let the God Almighty, the God of Israel, arise now, arise now, and come to our aid, O God. Arise, O God, arise, O God and make a difference in this generation. For we pray this in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Glory to God.